Well, I'm here with Dr. Jessica Laus, Lautz, excuse me. You are the VP of Demographics and Behavioral Insight at the National Association of Realtors. Yeah? That's me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. We're really excited to have you. Um, you have your PhD in real estate. Yes. I do. Okay. Yeah. Which is like, that's an extreme commitment to real estate. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I want to nerd out a minute on what excites you about real estate. What made you that committed to it that you wanted a PhD? Yeah. I mean, I've worked in this field since 2007 and I love NAR. I love the, the work that we're doing. And so I really wanted to take it a step further. Um, and the degree that I have is really more in behavioral economics. So it looks at the role um, and how interconnected uh, all of the disciplines are. So it's not just economics, it's also um, the demographics and it's the uh, sociological decisions that people make and the psychology behind home buying. So it was all of those things really mixed together. And so I really enjoyed working on my degree. Okay, so having that context, I feel like the environment that we've been in with the pandemic would be just like a playground for you because we're all having such new, you know, realizations about our experiences in our homes. Our homes mean something different to us. What What's your like headline takeaway from this experience and has it been fun? In yeah. a, you know, quarantine, terrible kind of way. <laughs> in a quarantine, terrible type of way. Right, okay. right. Naturally. <laughs> um, so we are doing a weekly flash survey. We actually just released the latest one a couple hours ago. So that's been really good. And a couple of the new questions that we added were really about how people's um, uh, relationship to their home is changing. So what are the home features that buyers are starting to really place a preference on? Uh, home offices, they were not in vogue. No one cared about a home office because you have a laptop, you can go sit on the couch and do your work. But now everyone really cares. And people not only want a home office in their new home, they want two home offices because my spouse, my partner, my sister, she needs to work somewhere else. I do not need that sound around me. So this is a really fascinating trend. But then we also asked about um, the density. So people living in city centers and are they yeah. going to start wanting rural areas, small towns? And we are starting to see that right now too. Yeah. I think um, for those of us who have been on the front lines of land use conversations at associations from an advocacy perspective, we are thinking a lot about what, what we've been advocating for in terms of smart growth and new urbanism and still believing in, in our commitment to compact and connected communities. But maybe is there a middle ground there seeing as what we've all you know, experienced in those very urban, very dense settings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm in a townhouse and the, it's been beautiful weather. And so we all have our windows open. And my husband literally was scared to come downstairs from the one home office that we have because I was sitting at the kitchen table. He thought I was on a conference call. No, it's the neighbor next door sitting in his backyard on a conference oh, call. Oh, wow. So I think like thinking about like how we can have these walkable communities, but still perhaps have a little more yard space. So a little privacy. All... Yeah, 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 exactly. Did you, in the flash survey that you've done, have you done any work related to open concept versus putting some more walls up also? <laughs> I, you know, I'm thinking everybody needs their space. <laughs> yeah, you know, we haven't gotten uh, too deep on that yet, but that is a great next question to ask. We're switching up the questions every week, so that's certainly one to follow up on. Um, we did talk about, and I think it's really fascinating too, that people are going to start having different people living with them. So even if they need that space, perhaps an older adult that was once in senior related living, now they're perhaps going to want that older adult living with them or a new baby boom or a puppy boom that we could have as well. Yeah, let's talk about the puppy boon a little bit. You, um, NAR recently published some information related to an increase in pet adoptions during this time. I have a Frenchie. He is absolutely an emotional support animal at this point. Um, how are you seeing that in, you know, are we seeing an increase in pet adoptions? How does that relate to what people want in their homes? What's the behavioral insight on that front? Yeah, I love this. So um, I have five animals in this home. And so absolutely, they 100% are ab the, the companion that I need right now. Um, we are seeing shelters around the country have been cleared out either with people adopting or fostering because they want the company in their home. They need entertainment for their kids. They need some walking. And so this is a good excuse to go outside and have a walk several times a day. So we have seen that. And on the buyer side, we've already seen that for single females, for unmarried couples, it's actually more important to them to be close to the dog park, have that fenced yard than it is to 
be close to good schools because they don't necessarily have a kid in the home. I want to ask you about the demographics related to our membership now. So I know that at ABOR, we're definitely seeing a membership that's skewing younger. Are you seeing that at the national level? Are there any other kind of interesting facts related to the demographics of our membership at large? Yes, so we are seeing, we're seeing more uh, younger members who are coming in. Um, we're also seeing that people may be retiring at this point as well. So you're seeing that just change, that shift. Um, we're also seeing a growth in female members nationally and a growth in minority members. So we really are seeing a change in our membership. Um, in fact, uh, for female members, it's near an all-time high. So we really are seeing a lot of diverse members coming in. That's excellent. Um, so as a first female CEO at ABOR, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that's an interesting comment about we're seeing people retire. You know, there, there is uh, obviously the market is being impacted by the virus and by everything that's happening right now. And, you know, as I'm thinking about what the demographic has been before the last couple of years, especially for ABOR, at least, it does skew towards what could be a retirement age. So is this the point where people say, I'm good, I'm going to tap out now? Do you think that we'll see that change? So it's really interesting when it comes to real estate, because it's not only, it's, it's rarely someone's first career. So yes. only 4% of members, really, it's their first career. Um, what we see is that it's often a retirement career. So people may actually move to a different area and decide, you know what, I still want to work part time. This is something that's always interested me. And this is a retirement career for me. So we do see our membership older in that sense. Um, or more seasoned, rather, in that yeah. sense. Um, <laughs> the other thing that we see is that there's a lot of younger younger adults who want to set their own hours, be their own entrepreneur, and jump in and really do kill it in real estate as well. So you see both spectrums entering at different ages. Yeah, and I guess I'm just thinking about when I see a market shift like the one that we're all experiencing, which is really to determine whether or not it'll be a shift or just a pause in the market given the environment. So I wonder... For those, uh, those folks that felt like it was a retirement plan, is it worth it still? You know, do they make changes and just think, well, this is not what I thought it was going to be, and this is not the best time to hop in there? Yeah, what we do see is that it's a little counter-cyclical. So people may actually be taking a pause in a different career. So they may have worked as a bartender, as a waitress, and now suddenly they have a, a definite pause that they have there. And yeah. so they may say that real estate is something that's always interested me. I can take the classes online. This is something where I might be able to jump into this and really you know, sharpen my saws, at least have a backup plan if and when I go back to work, maybe I can work both careers. And we do see that as well as people start in real estate, they often do work a second career. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So um, you published or your team did a report on marijuana and real estate, a budding issue earlier, <laughs> which I applaud NAR for tackling, but um, Texas is not, uh, has not legalized marijuana yet. I, you know, I think all states are having the conversation to some degree, but we do have a lot of members who are selling properties to folks that are moving to those states or moving in from those states. And of course, even hemp fields have um, you know, implications with regards to real estate transactions, especially commercial ones and land, and land exchanges here in, in Texas. What were your findings on the commercial side? What are you thinking about the residential side? What impact is this going to have maybe in our state if we do legalize at some point? Yeah. And I think, you know, even if it's not legal, you can learn from the states who come before you. Yes. And so what we really found this year, we broke out um, states where it's been legal for a longer period of time. So pre-2016 and then post-2016. And what we found is those who have been legal for a longer period of time, absolutely. You see that the commercial land prices, the warehouses, storefronts that perhaps were vacant, all of those have a bigger demand for them right now. Um, but then you also see on the residential side some complications that comes with that. So thinking about HOA rules or property managers and how they're going to work with leasing um, that property. And you also see lease complications on the commercial side as well. So there, yeah. there are complications, but there's absolutely a growth opportunity, uh, pun intended there, for our commercial folks. <laughs> well done. <laughs> but it does make sense that there would be this kind of yin and yang with it, right? That there are, you know, there's, there are optics with it. There are perspectives that are varying with regards to it's highly political. And so with that comes these implications, especially with regards to the residential side. That makes sense to me. Um, let me ask you, what research are you working on right now, aside from the flash surveys related to the pandemic? 
so we also just put out a sustainability report looking at the value of sustainability. So uh, our members really do find that clients want a sustainable home um, if they can find it. Inventory, of course, is flagging the nation right now. So if they can find a property that is sustainable, it does make sense to market that um, because there's a lot of people who want to cut down on their utility costs, um, perhaps with good insulation, good windows, good doors. And that means a bigger home or a closer in home to wherever they want to live. Um, so that really is a trade-off that consumers do see right now. What, what uh, so that, features are most desirable when they're seeking those sustainable properties? Um, so things that are going to hit your pocketbook at the end of the month. So thinking about those windows and doors, the energy efficiency that you can have within the home. Um, but then also thinking about uh, having energy efficient appliances, um, making sure that perhaps you have in that Nest thermostat, uh, something along those lines that really can uh, wash your utility cost. And then given the fact that the MLS helps um, acutely measure that consumer response to that type, those types of sustainability features, is the MLS properly structured now to manage that data flow? Are, are our standards appropriate? You know, for a long time, there was the conversation about the green MLS and whether our fields adequately accommodated capturing that kind of data. Do you feel like in your research, you're able to get what you need? So it's, what we're doing is we're serving on the member perspective, but we do have a question in there asking, does your MLS actually have green data fields? Do they mm -hmm. have this information for you? Some do and some don't. So if yours does, you probably are ahead of the curve there and making sure that you do have that information that agents can plug in and that on the buying side, they can look for those features. Yeah, well, certainly in Austin, I mean, sustainability is a prolific <laughs> uh, topic here. So we're, we, we've had green fields for a long time, but even, you know, having them is one thing, encouraging members to use them and learn how to use them properly is another. And it's, it is an interesting question of how do we equate real value when we're thinking about the, you know, algorithms behind um, value placements and and not just the consumer judgment call, but w associate in association with those improvements. So I think we'll continue to see more of that evolve. Yeah, absolutely. And just like a high tech home, some of those things are really important to a consumer. But you can also make that transformation to an older property once yeah. you're into that home as well. Yeah. The question is, how important is it up front versus me knowing that I can do that when I'm ready? Well, let me ask you, uh, wrap up here. What are your hot takes for the rest of the year? What do you think realtors should be paying attention to with regards to consumer demographics and, and insights? I mean, how much more will behaviors change as we continue this year? So I think we're going to see a shift. We've absolutely seen a pause in consumer behavior, but they're still working with their member, with the realtor, because they do want to have that transaction be a go once they have the stay at home orders lifted or they feel confident to move forward in that transaction. We've seen a big shift towards embracing technology right now. And it's both on the buyer, the seller side, the realtor side. So making sure that you're still working with those potential sellers saying, how can I fix up my home to sell? I have time to DIY some projects right now. And many members are working with clients in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a shift that we haven't seen before. Usually when you want to sell, you're ready to sell and you need to go. And now you have the time to actually do that. So yeah. Um, it's an interesting shift that we are yeah. seeing. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's, it, this time is interesting because it's actually what realtors do best is that they connect, right? And, yes. and so while, while the actual transaction itself may be slowing to some degree or is being impacted neg negatively by the environment, this is such an opportunity for our members to do what they do every day really, really well. And it's to connect with their clients, connect with their sphere, just really feel top of mind for those folks who might have some really hard questions about what their next move should be. Yeah, and that buyer demand is going to be there because people are cocooning in place. Um, they're being forced to cocoon in place. So if they were even a thought in the back of their head about wanting to move, they're probably really going to want to move coming out of this. So yeah, who has realized we... that their pantry is too small? <laughs> who has realized that there's not enough office space, that they don't have a home gym? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. All that they... I do think it's really interesting because our home is our refuge right now, but it's also 
in our face, either sufficient or not. And if it's not, you're pretty motivated to get out of there, perhaps. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you probably are evaluating who you're living with, whether that means <laughs> more people with you or perhaps yes, less. That's true. <laughs> some changes there. Or for or, or a four-legged fur friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Well, let's wrap up with a rapid round of fun questions. Um, what is your favorite way to unwind after you're done Zooming for the day? <laughs> Um, a complicated recipe or a yoga class. Oh, I love that. Okay. What is your favorite pet, cats or dogs? Oh, I have four cats. They outnumber the dog. Okay. That's awesome. Um, what are the top three websites you visit day to day? Uh, Twitter, um, refreshing more and more, yeah. uh, Instagram, uh, planning my next home project. I uh, much to uh, my family's dismay. Um, and, uh, probably zoom right now, honestly. Yeah. Oh, I know. Isn't that true? <laughs> um, who's doing amazing work in our community right now? So I want to plug just not one person, but I want to plug a program at right tools right now. It's an amazing program and members can take advantage of taking free courses, downloading free publications, um, being able to really sharpen their saws during this time where they have a moment. Um, so that's what I, in, instead of a person, that's a thing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, I remember when the first Write Tools Right Now came out at the last market turn and it was really powerful. It was a good time to just um, demonstrate value as an association. So I applaud NAR for bringing it back around and we'll do our part in helping plug it too. Um, what are you currently streaming? What's your favorite TV show maybe that you picked up in this time? Oh, okay. Well, slightly embarrassing. I love Outlander, so I'm definitely streaming those. I love um, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for podcasts, I like to give my brain a rest, obviously. So um, I, I've been listening through uh, Encyclopedica Womanica um, and The Sporkful. So it's a daily <laughs> pod of a badass woman. So um, in history. And then the sparkle is all in cooking. So that's great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. It's just awesome to get to know the staff that work so hard on behalf of our members every day at NAR. And your insights are awesome. It's just really cool to hear what you guys are here are talking about and what's cooking over there. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate it. You bet. <laughs> <laughs>